Hi, so in a previous video we made this stuff at Zinc Iodide. Now, we made it in a bit of a rush so there was an excess of iodine. You can see it's got a kind of yellowish colour. If yours does that, add a bit more zinc, it'll go clear again. But we can use it just like this, it just has a sort of charge state to it. So we've got some zinc iodide and we're going to make a gravity battery out of it. Now we have done this before in previous videos, all broken up, and I thought I'd do this in one shot video. So what we need is a container, the electrolyte, an anode and a cathode. To make the anode, it's a piece of cake, it's a bit of zinc, and I've got a bit of zinc foil here. Now the iodine's heavy, so it's going to drop to the bottom. So this bit needs to be on the top, obviously, and we need the cathode on the bottom. To make the cathode, we've got a bit of copper mesh here, and then we need to wrap that in plastic. This is carbon black filled high density polyethylene, which is conductive and protective. Because the halide will just attack the copper, so we need to put something product uh, conductive and protective around that, to stop that happening and this stuff HDPE is relatively immune I say relatively to halogens now each halogen has its own quotes of course and iodine has a great affinity for carbon so what I've got here is a bit of filter cloth this is from an air filter and it's an activated carbon cloth so there is my cathode with the plastic wrapped around it, heat sealed on with an ordinary household iron, and then I've run the iron over a bit of the carbon cloth to give me a square of carbon on the bottom. You don't need to do that. It does make it a little bit better and traps the iodine in the pores of the carbon. I have been through this before when we did a bromine battery, and you'll see that on the members' channel. This is exactly how to make the cathode, but that is the cathode, and we just stick the cathode, remember, in the bottom, because that's where the iodine's going to be, and then we can add our electrolytes. Now we can add our zinc to the top section, and we're ready to go. Okay, that's it, ready to go. All I've got to do is stick the zinc in. Because that's yellow, it's got a bit of iodine in there. That test motor right there is going to start immediately. I stick that in. There you go. I'll give you a close up. Okay, in, out, in, out, in. <laughs> I've watched several adult movies where people do that for about 15 minutes or so. Okay, to charge it, the zinc is the negative, the carbon is the positive, 1.2 volts, and it will charge. There we go, charging away. Now, it is a plating battery, so what will happen is the zinc will go on to the negative and the iodine will collect on the positive. And plating is actually more about current than it is about voltage. So you can actually whack that right the way up. There we go, I'm putting an amp now at 5.6 volts in. And what it's doing is depositing the zinc and depositing the iodine. Now, the zinc will form dendrites of that kind of voltage, but those dendrites will drop off to the bottom and react. What they'll represent is loss of energy input. But the dendrite itself doesn't cause short circuiting in a battery like this, which is pretty cool. And if we look very closely, we can actually see the iodine forming right there as a dark purple cloud. If we then turn that off and reconnect it to the motor, that motor is going to zip along. because we just banged a ton of energy in it. Now, it is working by diffusion, so diffusion does happen, which is why they have a relatively high self-discharge, which we talked about in the previous video. But the energy is actually stored in the electrolyte. The electrodes are responsible for the amount of amps it can give out. The amps it can give out is related to the surface area, the overall energy is the volume of electrolyte that you've put in there. The voltage it discharges at is 1.2 volts. The voltage you charge it at if you want to be gentle is 1.2, but you can over voltage it if you like to a massive degree, but you will lose energy because of course it will be uneven plating. Bits will drop off and that will represent losses. So zinc iodide chemistry is a really well-known chemistry. If you have a look on Google Scholar, you'll find lots of information about it. Lithium iodide is the batteries of choice for pacemakers. If you trap all of the iodine, of course, you won't have a battery because you're going to have to have the iodine movement, otherwise there's no reaction. No reaction, no battery. So it's always going to be a playoff between the two. Disadvantages of this is um, they're small electrodes given the volume we've got and they're quite far apart so the effective series resistance is going to be relatively high and of course when you have a high ESR 
you lose out in terms of energy. We already talked about zinc dendrites and when that drops another loss in energy. So there is going to be a degree of Coulomb inefficiency here, but then you pays the piper, you to make your choice as the saying doesn't go, and we can live with that in certain circumstances. Remember these batteries where the shuttle are best under full load condition. As long as it's always attached to a load, actually it's uh, relatively unimportant. If you use intermittent load, like you swap onto it every now and then, you'll lose quite a lot because of that self-discharge problem. Which is one of the things that is a lot of research is going into ameliorating that so that these will become much more of a viable battery alternative where you're going to leave it sitting around. So you don't find these used in cars very much for that very reason. Obviously, the next thing to do with it was somehow slow down that ion exchange. But that is another example of what is actually a pretty good um, gravity battery. Super easy to make, so you don't have that challenge of repeating lots of things all at the same time. You get yourself a big tub filling with zinc iodide, you're going to have a battery. Anyway. Well, it has to do this. I hope it helps. I hope you've enjoyed the series of videos. I'll probably do something on gelling it. But thank you very much for being members and thank you very much for watching. You might notice this is still zipping along.